smartest city, the smartest people, the biggest ideas. Here's another variation of that same old, somewhat tedious story. And I love stories like this. We've all heard them, you know, the uh, unknown writer or screenplay <clears throat> doctor who sends it around to all the appropriate studios or publishing houses and gets rejected once and twice and 20 times and then suddenly uh, is revealed to be an extraordinary genius. Um, that's the Eva Verte story. At age 16, as a high school student doing a science project, she came upon a compound, I hope I explained this properly, which apparently um, has the promise of really offering a cure for Alzheimer's. Uh, she was so committed to this research that she decided to finish her high school education by correspondence and this so, so, upset the bureaucrats at all the Canadian universities that she applied to that they turned her down. So she's at Princeton now. <laughs> and um, I think is going to go to my alma mater, Harvard, right? Yes. Don't know yet. Medical Not school. Decided. In order that she can learn more and continue with her research, Eva Vertes. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's an honor and pleasure to be here to this morning. I'd just like to clarify, I don't think I'm a genius by any means. Like Mears was saying, it's not genius, it's not brilliant that gets you somewhere. It's, it's hard work, it's a bit of brightness perhaps, but mainly it's hard work and just going for something you love. So first I'm going to tell you a bit about how I started my journey into the world of medicine, which I'm still just scratching the surface of. I'm going to be working this summer in a cancer stem cell lab at Stanford. And this, when, I, when I found out that I was going to be working in a cancer stem cell lab, the first thing that came to my mind was cancer stem cells. There's cancer, bad, and there's stem cells, good. And the connection between the two wasn't obvious to me at first. I didn't really understand how the two connected, and I wanted to know more. So I started doing literature research on What's the connection between cancer and stem cells? Stem cells, we hear about all the time in the news. We hear about, they're almost the panacea of the future. They're gonna be therapy, hopefully, for organ transplants and uh, for cloning, for all the biotechnological boom that's going on now. And so how do they relate to cancer? Well, cancer is the excessive growth, the excessive proliferation of cells that essentially clump together and rob the body of nutrients. And again, I wanted to see how is that like stem cells? And then when you look at stem cells, what they really are, they're a phenomenon. They're these malleable cells that are undifferentiated. They're not a specific organ. They're not a specific tissue. And they just replicate indefinitely. And, th and they can become anything, pretty much. And then when you look at cancer cells, you see the same type of thing. They're undifferentiated. They replicate over and over again, which is what causes the problems in cancer. And then, so I thought, well, I wonder why, why does cancer seem, because it's been shown that cancer seems to originate in a single cell, and that single cell is usually a stem cell. So why is cancer originating in a stem cell? In cancer, you see it develop a lot when you have injury to specific organs. You smoke continuously, and we see lung cancer, not always, but we see a link between that. We see something fascinating that I had no idea about until I read it a week or so ago, was that when you have bone fractures, stress bone fractures, there's a high likelihood that cancer will develop there. When you injure different body tissue or different body organs, it seems that cancer develops. And then suddenly I realized that stem cells are, they're a way of restoring new body tissue and new body organs. So is it almost as though cancer is a repair mechanism that's gone wrong? Is it almost that cancer is a response the body has evolved saying, you've got a damaged lung. Here's a bunch of cells that have potential to become any tissue you want. They can become lung tissue if you stimulate them, if you induce them properly. 
So perhaps cancer is just a hyperactive response and the body gets so excited to repair it that it just does it too much. So perhaps it's not elimination, perhaps it's fixing it. And this just ties back to my interest in neurodegenerative diseases, I think. Perhaps when you think of the brain, when you think of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Lou Gehrig's disease, most of the neurodegenerative diseases that we see a, a substantial amount of cell death. Perhaps the brain is realized, or the body is realizing that the cells aren't functioning so well anymore. We've got to start killing them off. So perhaps it's killing off aberrant cells. Perhaps these cells aren't even functioning anymore. But perhaps this is also a hyperactive response. Perhaps we shouldn't look at completely eliminating cell death, but, but perhaps we should look at fixing these cells' functions rather than just eliminating the problem. So that's one field of research that really fascinates me. And just going off and on another tangent with the cancer research, which I'm really, I'm just, I'm new in this whole field of research, so I don't know a lot about it, but it's exciting and I want to know more. There is something else that intrigued me when I was just reading about this subject in general. It suddenly struck me. You, you think about the leading cause of death in America, the leading cause of death pretty much around the world, disease-wise, and you think of cardiovascular disease. But do we ever hear of cancer of the heart? Do we ever hear of cancer of the arm muscle or cancer of the leg muscle? I hadn't. It occurs. Very, very rarely, though, do mus does muscle tissue, muscle cells become cancerous. And this intrigued me, and I wondered why. So I sent off a few emails to different professors working in uh, specializing in the field of either muscle physiology or either cancer and stem cells. And I asked them pretty much, why do, why do muscle cells so rarely become cancerous? Is there something special about them? And a lot of the replies I got were, well, muscle cells have a very slow turnover rate. They, they don't replicate a lot. They replicate when they're stem cells, and then they differentiate into muscle tissue and don't really continue the division process. So it's not really a prime target for cancer because cancer likes hijacking something that's already dividing, and it can just make it divide more and more and more. But this answer didn't really satisfy me. What's preventing the cancer from proliferating in the muscle tissue. Is it perhaps that the cancer can't really embed into the muscle tissue and can't start dividing? Are the muscles not a good habitat for the cancer to survive in? But the main question that just puzzles me is, is why is it so rare in muscle tissue? Muscle tissues are very, they have a high source of energy. They have lots of blood vessels. They're always active, which I wonder, maybe they're always active, they're always contracting. It's almost like a flush system that's flushing the muscles and keeping them clean and keeping them functioning well. They've linked um, a decrease of cancer, or, or almost, a, not a prevention, but a, a form of prevention of the onset of cancer to increased exercise or, or decreased obesity. And perhaps, is this something to do with activity of the muscles? Is it something to do with when the muscles are active, when the muscles are being utilized? they're secreting something or they're producing something that somehow fights off the cancer. I don't know, and the yellow light's flashing at me. But <laughs> uh, those are some of the things that just fascinate me and I want to explore. And the main thing is just that I think disease altogether, not just cancer, not just neurodegenerative disease, has to be looked at less in black and white, less in good and bad, more in here's the problem. But maybe it's not really, maybe it's not completely a problem that has to be eradicated. Maybe it's a problem that we can manipulate. Maybe we can induce the cancer cells to become stem cells. And then not only do we reduce cancer, we produce new tissue. We produce new tissue that can function and can promote health. Perhaps that's what disease states are. I don't know, but it seems like an interesting path for the future to follow rather than the, the common view of disease where we've got to get rid of it or we've got to, and we've got to restore health. So that's what I'm very interested in. And I thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Get the latest Idealist news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.ideacityonline.com.